showcase of my Captain Spork, which is a Spark character, especially with Willow Hail, and I'm using magic finding stuff like Cloak of Tarmor Isley, and Venture Rings, just the overview of the gear, Revenous Passion, the Rear Guard for block chance, and spell and attack block kept. As you can see here, these two rows, I'm immune to ailments due to this Stygian Vice, which has a roll for 58% chance to avoid being shocked, and my Abyss Jewel for over 42% of chance to avoid shock and phasing, together with the Storm Shroud. So, modifiers for chance to avoid being shocked apply to elemental ailments. My resistances are kept with primitive elements, which also negates all of the ailments, therefore the storm shroud is not needed and I could swap this, but if I use different rings that have better resistances, then I would swap out of the primitive elements and then I would need the storm shroud. The helmet gives me a lot of rage and the rage applies to spell damage instead of attack damage. And with the ravenous passion, I gain 10 rage after spending a total of 200 mana, grants spell damage instead of attack damage per rage, and if I remove the grace period, see I'm getting rage. And if I spend it, like every cast gives me 10 rage. And I'm using Thread of Hope with a Massive Ring near the Endurance and Overcharge node. Then I can spec into the Battle Trance, Tireless, Expertise, Precision for Speed. And I can also get Spiritual Command, and I could get some minion cast speed. This would be 8% increased cast speed, which is really nice. Other things about this build is Soul Ascension against Soul Eater. It has a really nice roll for the maximum souls eaten. The Rainbow Stride for maximum block chance can be a lower roll, because I'm overcapped on the spell block anyway. And I'm one overcap if I have the boots equipped. Because now I'm at 56, and with 20% more, I'm at 76. I could use a 90% roll instead. And the quiver scales way harder, and it's only a 40% block chance for spells. But with the Willow Hail, it scales way higher, to 247%, so it's a 3.47 multiplier. And it's really cool, because it scales the projectile speed and the damage. And that's my only defense, basically. This. And this also the defiance of destiny is really nice for some defenses and resist and mainly the missing unreserved life before hit is gained then the long shot it has projectile speed and a lot of projectile damage and the corruption for the rear guard is lightning damage leech and for the leech i also went with the spell damage leech and light eater and then the leech mastery for 10 percent leech instant which is kind of nice, but it takes like 10 points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then the corruption on the rainbow stride is really cheap. I got the boots for like 10c. And then my auras get two additional levels. And eternal blessing is an aura skill. And arrogance is an aura skill. And then the other aura as well. My movement skill is frost blink for entry blast. Faster casting, spell echo, and culling strike for calls if I really need it. I dropped a bit of hell myself and I corrupted it and crafted it myself. And the blind is kind of for the tornado, but it's not that important. It's just for 10% increased elemental damage and the attack speed does nothing, but maybe it has a nice resale value. I'm using the automation, moderation, enhance for the arcane cloak and the berserk. The only thing that really benefits from the quality is the Broken Cloak, in my opinion. Rush Shield, Sigil of Power, Moderation, and Snapper Mark. Can't use a too high item level Snapper's Mark, because it has huge dex requirements. I ideally want to spec out of this and this too. So I would have ideally 50 less dex, but I'm also using it for PS. Here's Spark, Item Rarity. The 23% quality is nice. It has higher total rarity than the 21 20%. Spell Echo, Pinpoint, Archmage, and Pierce, and have all my gems. I'm using Weapon Swap for leveling additional gems. 
especially in a synthesized bow. Ideally I would have six red sockets and then strength gems in it with additional quality and socket gems and I would level a lot of empowers. But for now I'm leveling anything in there. Other stuff is a corrupting blood jewel. Then healthy mind to transform this into mana. The storm shot we had. The thread of hope we had. This is the unnatural instinct. And that's all about the gear and flasks of the progenesis I bought for 23 divines and I used 3 divines to divine it for some really nice rolls. This one is worth like 40 divines now. The Oriad's end I bought unidentified and I got a decent roll for the kill effect. Diamond flask I used for crit chance and gain flask charges on a crit, 32% chance. The void being stunned is like whatever, I'm not really using it. Then the gold flask, gain 3 charges on hit. And the item rarity, because item rarity scales the amount of gold we get. The foreboding divine mana flask is for the corrupting blood immunity or bleeding immunity and gaining huge chunks of mana. And the foreboding mana flask, if you look here, I'm spending it kind of fast. And then I can click the flask. And it chunks and keeps me full, even with Arc Mage. And this is now the automation trigger ring. And I'm not really rechaining much. And then the next Arc Mage hits the automation. And I'm always low mana then. Then to map showcase. My Atlas is this right now. I'm mainly running. The toxic zero maps and jungle valley but I also spec into mausoleum or scryte from residence so I get the nemesis card eventually jungle valley has the apothe apothecary for me and the toxic sewer has the unrequited love for the mirror shards my atlas tree mainly for the map sustain I run this tree Can look at it yourself. Then I have a tree for ritual and beast cherry, and currently specced into this one with the searing exog map modifiers and blocking everything besides beyond and ritual, just ten percent nodes. Look here, I'm always getting ritual for more natural mobs, and I'm pushing scarabs a bit. And especially the ambush scarabs. For the beyond, I take the divination cards and 100% chance for your maps to attract beyond demons. And I get no beyond bosses. Kind of fast maps, but my build is kind of bad. If I just want to do all I can go. For the ramping, I use tornado to start. Until I get some souls and more car speed. I always pick minions because my resistance are kind of bad. And with the I must have time it's full damage setup. Half a million per spark. This closed layout is really nice because the walls help me bounce spark quicker and more compared to Jungle Valley, it has more difficulties. I don't do the rituals in this setup, I just want the pack size. Just keep attacking, the boss will come eventually. And damage is kind of okay, but not good. It's mainly for the magic finding setup. Skipped some gold. Should be still like 13k. I also used the caster mastery to open chests. Nice venters.
Got to check the flasks. Dust. With my chest, I'm getting a lot of blue items. They are all identified. And in total I got like, over the past 3 weeks, 10,000 chaos from identified magic items, like this. But the maximum rest doesn't sell well. But if you get like spell damage, um, one, plus 1 to additional spells, oh, what is it called? Um, plus one level to all spell gem gems, skill gems, on like a scepter, or all of the righteous fire, or cast and stun boys, chieftains, then that's like two divines, and most of them are sold for like 180 chaos. That's a lot of shrines on this map. Uh, yeah. Cleared it properly. Um, that's the map showcase. And for my spark, I have this regex. It shows all of the maps that I want to run that have no reflect, no less regeneration or no regeneration, reduced effect of auras or crit multiplier. That's the map showcase. No scarabs. Rising fire is just for tracking how many diff cards I would get. That's also a lot of chaos map, I guess. As a tanky mob, I'm using my tornado. It's really tanky, I'm using all this stuff too. So later. Like 50% less damage. Okay, that's a natural ringer. I guess. Yep, still in the third Atlas tree, not the first one. So it is really nice from the gloves. This map layout I have way less damage because it's open area and the spark doesn't hit that much. And I'm mapping kinda slow I guess. Compared to other builds. Second blazing fire. Oops, forgot that. Explodes help with us. I could use a mark on hit, but I'm not using it on this build. I'm scrapping this build very soon. And I will showcase you what gear I have for it already. Whoop. Nothing. Two mobs remain. 
kind of nice for clearing. And I see when I have um, Soul Eater stacks, because I hit the rare, then the boss spawned, now it's the boss up. Uh, that was the second map. Most of the time I do the map sustain and harbingers, yes, like this, and the map. I deal with higher pack size, which was a pack size, sounds good. Oh no 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 Shit, that would have been eat of words. No Damn. Missing like 150%? Yeah, like 100% quantity. Rip. This'll do nicely Hmm. Should I use the other quant altars if I drop any? This'll do nicely, Exa. Usually I want to clear the rest of the map so I get all of the altars for quantity and rarity. Okay. And after that I clear all of the harringers for increased loot. Over here. I picked the wrong altar, so it's the worst showcase, so I'll probably kill it sooner than later. I must have time to gather. Standing around a lot. It's worth to use your cooldowns. Whoops. Death dancing already triggered. Hands are here, I'm dying to running ground. I lowered the filter for the magic items that are shown, so it shows way more stuff than I actually should show. So let's check what this one is. Uh, it's dictator, yeah, that's worth it. You go for like 50 chaos, most cases. That's a lot of placing fires. Cold usually never sells. I think I never sold any cold gem or modifier. Should probably kill stuff. Probably kills me. Didn't want to go there, but whatever. I use I showed dust plates too. Any of them. Because I want a resolute technique, ephemeral edge. I hit the resolute technique like two or three times, but then the mythic orb poofed it. Is spent. Should hide the jewels with block chains, but whatever. Then I'll pick 
up. Is there a technique? Attack speed, maybe. Unlikely though. I forgot to check how much this map gives in gold. Have to make sure the mic is on. Would have been sad. There's like six blazing fires on this map. Very nice. Bad showcase. Just speed train. Lol. <laughs> I think I spent too much mana. And a full inventory. Rip. Yeah, Morass, with Purity of Elements and Bismuth is a lot, but it's mainly because I ran a blue altar and then I need like 20 overcap for fire and 80 for cold and lightning and I'm still undercapped. Should have like 100, 180, 180 or something like that. Triggering all of the altars and Syrian Exarch mobs, so they die to the AoE that I'm firing out anyway. It's getting stacks. No beast of burden. I must have time to gather my will. Reduce my class people a lot too. Mm. Whatever. Sorry to run out by the time the boss. Spawns anyway. He's tanky. Uh, hexproof, I guess. What are the mods? 60 life, hexproof. More mods to life. And avoid the elements, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. For the masteries, um, the lightning mastery increase in. Increases and reductions to maximum mana also apply the shock effect at 30% of the value. So I get really high shocks because I have a lot of mana. Kinda. Maybe like 5k mana. Then the next build I have planned is from Red Vials. Penance Brand. This time I was super unlucky. I had like almost add all of the level 20 gems and the suffixes. I want to go to 25 and a brick. And that's the next best one I got. Spend a lot of divines on it. That's okay. I spent a lot of recombinators with this one. I wanted to ideally hit the Chaos Res, Chilled Effect, and Suppression. But I thought, okay, this one is good enough right now until I hit the Suppression stuff anyway. Because my chest is still missing it. I hit the three prefixes really quickly. I should have hit like 90 in a chorus lock from Beast Cherry. And I hit it with like 20, to T1 life, and then just any suffixes to finish the build. Don't have the corruption yet on the Wrath Pit. And the boots I got for like 3 divines for maximum Chaos Res. And 
For the current build still, the Projectors PS2 additional targets is a really valuable fracture from the Essence mod, and then use the Deafening Essence of Threat. With the Quiver, up to 52% increased projector speed, and this one is the well, up to 46% projector speed, but in a better base. Then you would use the PS Essence, but it's like 6% less projector speed, and if you scale it by 2.5, it would be like a 50% projector speed difference. And that's why this one is worth way more than the other one. And mostly because you have to use fracturing orbs on the good base to get it. And the wand is still bad. I was kind of lucky with the adorned. 88% roll. Balance of Theros. I ideally wanted a better one for like 4 divines. But I took this one for like 100 chaos. Then I was really lucky with the unnatural instinct. I had it in... Love through ice and in this dev card that cost me like 10 divines for full set and i let a friend of mine hand it in with a level 58 character and then we hit the corrupting blood and also the increased effect of non-damaging amens which is nice and it's like a 80 divine unnatural instinct now the chest was like 200 divines just for the prefixes to sell or if, it, if you want to buy it this one probably a few divines Nothing, 3 divines, 10 divines. I used the uh, Wrath and the Vitality, because then I can use the cheap craft for like 4 chaos to get the physical converted to cold or fire and lightning. Then I have a bunch of 4% crit multi tools, but they aren't crafted yet. And these missed the uh, item size mod to a vendor. And my champs for now are kind of bad. And here's my movement skill that I have from here. Then I use Wrath for the permanent uptime on the Watcher's Eye. So I get the 30% damage converted, plus the 25, and 50% from the gem itself in second line, 50% of physical damage converted to lightning damage. And I use the cold uh, craft here, so I can also get the chill effect on increased damage with hits against chilled enemies. And that will be my next build. That's just a 5 passive cluster for like 10 chaos. The three passive ones cost like 60 divines. And now that I did the showcase, I can respec into Inquisitor and have more fun, hopefully. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to hit like 1000 subscribers. Would be really cool. And until next time, bye bye.